Hi everyone! Have you ever tried bringing any resources for writing assessments? I believe in most cases they are not allowed, right? But do you think these resources play an important role in improving test takers' grades? Well, today our group will present the article Second Language Learners Use of Writing Resources in Writing Assessment. Our group members Eden, Emma and I will help you find out. Undoubtedly, use of technology is a currently heated topic. Most students sitting in this classroom are equipped with at least one electronic device. Also, L2 learners can access the glossary only by moving the mouse. In terms of this study, test design and administration has been impacted by technological advancements. Apart from that, learners have a wide range of linguistic tools to access what they need for writing, such as dictionary, spell check, term bank, corpora, search engines, and news archives. In terms of research, the previous emphasis was largely on the use of linguistic tools in learning and instructions. However, research has been rarely seen on the use of external resources in writing assessment because accurate and fair measurement of test taker's writing ability under this certain circumstance is not guaranteed. Based on the background, three research questions are raised. How frequently and why do L2 candidates across varied proficiency levels, which are beginner, intermediate, and advanced, use resources in the writing assessment? Are there any differences in how test takers perform with or without using writing resources? What do research participants think of the use of resources? This study should be emphasized in the academic domain. As Wago stated in 2002, employing resources could be a part of the conduct if process of writing would count it as an L2 writing ability. Also, how second language learners perform in their real writing scenario is reflected. Two authors, East and Weigel, said that generalization of test takers' performance could occur from the test to the real life. Furthermore, Bachman and Palmer expressed in 2010 that not only linguistic knowledge but also strategic competence, which is an essential language ability, can be elicited through this practice. Next, methodology is demonstrated. 39 adult L2 English learners in the United States, most of whom were L2 Japanese speakers, participated in the study by completing two writing tasks. One was the trip review with writing resources, while the other was product review without them. Also, two survey questionnaires, which concerns demographic features and test takers' perspectives on the test were delivered before and after the test respectively. In terms of scoring, sample reviews were scored and rating discrepancies were discussed and resolved. To avoid bias effect, test takers' background was not exposed to readers. In case of the halo effect, writing responses were distributed by tasks and two responses from the same test taker were not assessed one after another. Additionally, Responses from participants and their movement were the main data sources for analysis. Regarding analysis, tools included descriptive statistics for Rubik components to investigate the central tendency, score variability, distributional trace of scores, normality, and homogeneity of test data. Survey responses are analyzed by descriptive statistics as well. T-Test and ANOVA were used for mean scores of the overall performance and five rubric components. External and internal reliability of test tasks was assessed by inter-rater reliability estimates and Cronbach's alpha estimates. Many facet rush measurement, which is also called MFIM, was used for reliability related to examinee, proficiency level, task, rater, and rating scale and bias analysis was introduced for systematic interaction between tasks and proficiency levels and between tasks and rubric components. Next, Eden will talk about the result of the study. To answer the three research questions, the author collected the data of students who use frequency of each writing resource, their performance on each part, and their perspectives on using writing resources in their writing assessment. Now let's take a look at the author's excellent data analysis. 
The first two figures tell us the students' use of different writing resources across proficiency levels and their reasons of using such resources. What you can say here is that all students used at least spelling check tools, and this may be because it is automatically turned on, then followed by dictionary. Combined with the second figure, the most popular reason for using writing sources is to find English words and check spinnings. We can conclude that most of the learners use tools for vocabularies. And one interesting finding here is that although spelling check is automatically turned on, they still use tools for spelling check. This frequency finding could answer the recent question 1. All these data reflect the nature of writing sources in English writing process. Then the following table presents the descriptive statistics of overall score and uh, across the reading components within the two tasks. It could be seen that the average score of triple review, which is writing resource supported, is higher than the product review, which does not provide access to writing resources. And in both tasks, students tend to perform better in the components of appropriateness. However, this data needs to be used in caution because the difficulty of tasks themselves may also influence the performance, which is one of the main limitations that we are going to talk later. Then a t-test was performed to analyze whether the means between two tasks is significantly different. According to the results, in all components and overall average, the performance of test takers is significantly different with a moderate effect size. That is, to what extent does these differences affect the real situation? The result could support the research question too. How does their writing performance differ with and without the use of writing resources across different proficiency levels? Now we can see that there are differences, but how do they differ? The author performed another ANOVA test to see the differences of performance among three proficiency groups of students. And the first table, just like the first one before, shows the descriptive data of the performance of each group in each component. Then this data was computed in an ANOVA test. And then the results suggested that in both trip review and product review tasks, the performance of three groups of students differs significantly. And to further investigate which group differs which, a post hoc task was also performed. And the results suggested that between beginner group and intermediate group, intermediate group and advanced group, their performance of both tasks, all components and the overall average were all significantly different. And this can fully answer the previous question too. Regardless of testing condition, both task types and proficiency level groups can lead to a significant difference of test performance. However, although the author did excellent data analysis, there are too many factors other than language ability may influence the test taker's performance and would influence the reliability of this research. Therefore, they also did two more analysis to prevent the loss of reliability. The first problem would be that the writing scores were evaluated manually and the readers may not be trustful. To address this question, two readers were examined by the inter-reader reliability estimates and the results of 88 and 87 in two tasks from 79 to 87 in their respective five components supported a fairly high reliability of their reading outcome. Then a many-faceted rush measurement analysis were also presented to support the reliability of the research. In this figure, the first column is the overall equal interval scale for the following columns. As you can see, the upper, the higher. Then the second column indicates the ability of each student in the three groups and the distribution is normal which means that the research outcome from the uh, research could be significant and generalizable. Then in the following columns, we don't separate the three groups, so we place the, each starting point of the proficiency levels of students in the three groups as zero here in the third column. And then the fourth column presents the significant difference between the difficulty of two tasks which means that task difficulty may affect performance. The fifth column suggests the severity of two readers, although they may be significantly different with each other with chi-square value of 347.2 significance level of 0 0.00, their range of severity is far smaller than students' ability range in the first column, so it relatively has less influence. Sixth column 
presents the difficulty of each component in the rubric and the last five columns presents the functionality of each rating scale that is how high the ability is required to achieve the band scores as you can see most of the results were closely related except the grammar parts the extinction suggests that to achieve nine in the grammar learners need to have higher ability than in other components to further support the reliability of the research, the author performed two bias interaction analysis, respectively between task and the proficiency level and task and rating scale. The results presented here suggest that all of them are not significantly different, with p value larger than 0.05, which means that the task type would not affect too much on the results. Now I'm sure that you have been bored with my voice. Let's move on to Emma's part. She will present the qualitative part of the research and a thorough conclusion and some implications, critiques of the research. Now let's talk about the results of questionnaires for test takers' perspectives on using writing resources in the assessment. According to the descriptive statistics in the table 8 and 9, most test takers thought the writing resources were helpful and they felt more confident with access to them. The most wanted resources were the linguistic tools that can help them improve the lexical aspect of the language. On the other hand, one third of them expressed some concerns about the fairness of the test. One student's comment made an interesting point here, saying that whether using writing resources could affect the test fairness depends on the test purpose. In this concluding part, let's sum up some important findings. First of all, test takers perform better on a task with access to the writing resources, which may not be surprising because they were given a system. However, having access to writing resources did not make any change in distinguishing test takers' levels and did not lead to test takers performing differently in terms of the components of their writing ability. Besides, it was worthwhile to note that more intermediate and advanced level test takers could use the writing resources effectively, while beginning level ones mainly use them to figure out meaning or spelling. Finally, although most test takers positively perceive linguistic tools, there were mixed views on whether it would be considered fair practices to use them in the test. This part is about the limitations and suggestions for future studies. As for the limitations, the first point is the gender bias of the participants and their unbalanced L1 background. Most of them were female and more than half of the participants L1 is Japanese, which would possibly influence the interpretation of the results. Besides, the small sample size can cause some limitations in running the quantitative analysis and generalizing the results. What's more, the assessment conditions and the tasks were confounded, so the interpretation of what was found in terms of different assessment conditions may have been due to different tasks or due to the interaction between the assessment conditions and the tasks. On top of that, several suggestions can be proposed. In the future study, researchers can separate linguistic tools from other writing resources and compare different performance when using different types of tools. Besides, modifying the research method to have a control group and an experimental group could better avoid the confounding situation. Finally, it's better to specify the context of the writing assessment in the questionnaires because students may have different attitudes towards writing resources depending on the different purposes of the writing assessment. The final part of the presentation is the critique of the article. The abstract of the article succinctly addresses all relevant parts of the article, and the purposes are evident in the introduction. All three research questions are easy to follow and have been answered. Although there is a confounding issue in the data analysis, the overall study design and research method are quite appropriate and described in detail. 
Adopting the Likert type scale to collect data is suitable for quantitative research in this study. Besides, the design of the five components in the rubrics provides a strong rationale for the scoring process. However, the literature review is relatively brief and general and did not clearly lead to the significance of the current study. The discussion question for today's presentation is, what are your opinions on allowing access to writing resources in the writing assessment? That's all of our presentation. Thank you for your listening.